Hello everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the best platform around for distance learning in business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters for making this video possible, and we'd also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well, so please check the link in the description for more details. My name is Sava, and today we are going to investigate what makes countries rich. And uh, the simplest model that has been proposed at the beginning of the 20th century is the solo model that utilizes the production function that explains or seeks to explain countries' gross domestic product or real GDP in terms of the factors of production that country owns. And the two most important factors of production that are utilized in this model are country's population, that is, its stock of productive labor, and we have got population in millions of people, and uh, capital, which is capital goods, that is, machinery, equipment, and so on and so forth, assessed in million constant US dollars. And all of our data is from 2019, and again, in million, either in million constant US dollars or millions of people, retrieved from pan world tables for 180 countries exactly and here we'll try to estimate what is the relevance of these two factors of production in explaining the differences in real gdp across countries using the very famous cobb douglas production function specified over here it tries to explain the gdp real gdp of a particular country i as this product and this product includes A, which is total factor productivity or the technological constant that characterizes how productively this country can utilize the resources it owns, its labor or its capital, multiplied by labor that a particular country is endowed by, LI, and the capital that this country owns, KI, raised to the powers of alpha and beta respectively. And those alpha and beta parameters can be interpreted as elasticities of production by labor and capital, respectively. The greater they are, the more responsive the total volume of production, the total value in dollars at least, is to changes in labor and capital. And what is also important is that those parameters alpha and beta, or the combination, the sum of them, can be used to determine what are the returns to scale of the production function. If alpha plus beta is less than 1, it means that this function is homogeneous with a degree less than 1, meaning that if you, for example, double both labor and capital, your output, your GDP, less than doubles. There are decreasing returns to scale. On the other hand, if the sum is equal to 1 or very close to 1, then you can say that there are constant returns to scale, and this function is homogeneous of a degree 1, meaning that if you double labor and capital, the output doubles exactly. And the perhaps most interesting case is when the sum is greater than one, then the returns to scale are increasing, meaning that if you double labor and capital or double all factors of production in a more general case, then your output would more than double. For example, increase by a factor of 2.5 or something like that. And uh, the design of a regression that will utilize inspired by the Cobb-Douglas production function in the solo model today, will allow us to at least hint towards which of these three cases is true. However, you might look at this equation and uh, struggle to understand how can we estimate it in a linear regression framework. However, this particular Cobb-Douglas production function is designed as such so that if you take natural logarithms from both sides over here, then you can decompose this product into a sum, and those parameters, those elasticities, alpha and beta, will come forward in front of the logs, so you can easily estimate them using a multiple linear regression. So that's exactly what we'll do now. We'll estimate the natural logarithms of the real GDP, of our output, and of our factors as well, for all 180 countries. And then we can estimate our linear regression model using the linest function, selecting a 3 by 5 template and applying the linest function, regressing our logarithm of real GDP onto our 
independent variables are factors, that is our logarithm of population and capital stock respectively, and then we input one because we need the constant that would be interpretable as our total factor productivity on average across countries, our logarithm of A, and we also need to return additional statistics, that is the standard errors of our coefficients, the R squared and the degrees of freedom. We can close the brackets and enforce this formula using shift control enter, as again, a linear regression is nothing more than a multiplication of a bunch of matrices, and we'll cover that in some future video on the topic. However, right now, we can simply look at the coefficients and the standard errors that the Linus template provided us with. So we can see that our elasticity uh, in terms of labor is quite a bit lower than the elasticity in terms of capital, them standing at roughly 0 0.2 and 0 0.8. And quite notably, we can already see kind of eyeball that the sum of alpha and beta is around one. And we can verify that by just calculating it straight away, summing up beta and alpha to arrive at 1.026, which means that we are very close to one indeed, we're very close to constant returns to scale. However, the doubling of our factors of production, labor and capital would result on average on output more than doubling. However, the increasing returns to scale here are not that prominent as you perhaps could have expected initially. Now we can test for the significance of the individual regresses of the individual variables by calculating the T stats, dividing our coefficients by the respective standard errors, and also testing for significance explicitly by using a two-tailed T test, inputting the absolute value of T stats and the degrees of freedom reported over here. And we can see that both our capital and labor are quite significant, very significant in that regard, determinants of differences in country GDP, with the constant also being significant at 5%. And uh, what is also notable about this model is that the R squared reported over here is very close to one, it means that our differences in labor and capital across countries explains roughly 97% of cross-country variations in GDP, which is remarkably good. And uh, now we can use the uh, template that we have created to assess total factor productivity across all countries, which means we can assess how well do individual countries utilize the resources they, they are endowed with. And uh, here, as total factor productivity stands for A in the initial Cobb Douglas production function, we can easily estimate that having calculated alpha and beta by just dividing the uh, GDP of countries by labor and capital raised to the powers of the respective parameters. And let's do just that. Let's assess total factor productivity for all our countries by dividing their real GDP by the product of population, that is, labor stock, raised to the power of alpha, and we need to lock the row in alpha, and multiply it by the capital stock over here, raised to the power of beta over here. And we need to lock the row here as well. And we can enforce this formula and calculate it for all our sample countries, and see that there are notable differences in total factor productivity across our 180 sample countries. We can see notably high values of total factor productivity, for example, we can see that the value for United States is 2.69, quite a bit uh, higher than average, and we see some remarkably low values, for example, for Venezuela or Yemen. Those are countries that experience notable political perturbations and difficulties, and that's why perhaps they are not as capable of utilizing their resources to generate valued output. And that's how we interpret total factor productivity using a Cobb Douglas function and a multiple linear regression in the spirit of the solo model. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'm eager to see any further suggestions on videos in business, finance, or economic topics you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel or consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.